probably one of the vaguest things I've had in a while, but it's still very intriguing. <laughs> Hey guys, this is my review for The Rover. This was a film that was suggested to me by a good friend of mine. I remember seeing the trailer for it back in 2015, 2014, and the film looked really vague. Well, in a sense, it's a movie about Guy Pierce, whose car gets stolen, Robert Pattinson's brother is one of the guys who steals it, they go and find the car. That is the movie in three sentences, however, there's so much more that happens on a visual level, in terms of just watching the characters. We're not seeing them, there's dialogue here and there, but what happens really the main meat of this story is how we visually see these characters. And admittedly, it is a slow burn. There was at least three times I watched this, when the night I watched it, it was really late, and I was like, you know what, I should go to bed. I was like, okay, I'll give it five minutes. That happened three times. Each time there's a moment where I was like, eh, maybe I'll turn it off. There was a part that would make me, that would draw me back into it. In the end, I watched the entire movie until the wee late hours of the night. Possibly one of the most interesting aspects of this entire movie is Guy Pierce's character. Because he's not a protagonist, but he's not an antagonist. But he's definitely not a good person. I think this really captures the idea of a man who has nothing left to lose. That is in a sense, the main meat of the story is that Guy Pierce is hell-bent on doing, getting his car back. And the reasons why is not really revealed until the end, but when you think about it, when you see it, and then you like, you look back, everything else makes sense to him. There's such great visual cinematography in this film. There's very long-lasting shots, there's very uh, large landscape shots, and they're all really good. They're not just artsy-fartsy crap. They actually do have, well, especially there's two mirroring ones from behind Guy Pierce's back that both mirror kind of his emotional state as well as just how little he cares about anything else in the world anymore. And there's a scene, there's one scene with a army guy that was probably one of my favorite scenes in the movie where he's talking about the what do you do now that it's over. And that's the thing too is that the director of this film really captures a different version of the apocalypse or the end of the world because to be honest, it still looks like what I think Australia looks like. I've watched too much Mad Max. But otherwise, there's still stability in areas, but in the rest of it, it's still... It's pretty shitty, and you really don't get a full look at it. You only get pieces, which I liked. I immediately made you want to see the more of the world and different aspects of how the world is structured. Now, one thing that I'm definitely on the fence about was I liked him at some points, but then there was other times I was like, eh, it was Robert Pattinson. Robert Pattinson's character has this southern drawl that's so difficult to discern at points. Guy Pierce's Australian accent sounds completely normal, and... I had to put on the subtitle sometimes for what Robert Pattinson was saying. But his character is very interesting. He's maybe like an ex-drug addict, but he has these weird mannerisms that are very consistent, especially in the in the final climax. These weird mannerisms of his character, these kind of speech impediments, I like that he had this and made him a very unique character. Well, and then the decisions and the, the choices and the events that happen around these two are so brutal that I just couldn't stop watching it. Every time I thought I was going to end it, I just kept going. And this pop, admittedly, like I said, it's a slow burn. Admittedly, when I tried to watch this movie the first time, I actually turned it off after five minutes. I just wasn't into it. And there's a soundtrack choice at one point where they put on this pop song. Admittedly, it's coming from a car, but just the whole scenario was just very strange. Kind of a weird look back into the world that they want, that once was. So in the end, I'm going to give the rover a 5 out of 7. It's a good movie, but it's a one-time watch. I'll basically give you that. You really wouldn't be able to watch this movie again for a long time. It's very well done, it's very well it's very well set up. The world that it's set in is very interesting. The characters themselves, Guy Pierce's character is incredible. But as I said, when you watch it once, you really won't want to watch it again. At least that's my take. Anyway guys, hope you enjoyed this review and I'll see you guys next time.